Here's part two of our conversation with Kasim Sultan. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. He was a longtime member of Utopia with Todd Rundgren, also a longtime collaborator with Todd as a solo artist. Played with Joan Jett, The New Cars, Meatloaf, Blue Oyster Cult, Scandal, Holland Oats, and a lot more. Here's Kasim Sultan. Great tune. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know where I put it. Oh, oh, geez. I don't usually pull out album covers, but uh, like, yeah. holy snapping turtles. They uh -huh. misspelled your name on this, right? Yeah, T-A-N. Yeah, my name is misspelled more. Uh, my name is is on that record more than Meatloaf's. So uh, I, I uh, but it's responsible for any of this this stuff going on I here. Am, I, what, I, listen, I what's going on here? The only thing I'm responsible for on that record is 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 is, is helping with the arrangements and the bass playing on the entire record, which you know, uh, in terms of what you know what are some of the highlights of your musical career i think playing on one of the biggest selling records of all time um is a feather in one's cap um you know i, I mean i have tons of friends who have played on millions of records but not too many people have played on dark side of the moon thriller um uh uh there's a, a, a hotel california or Bat Out of Hell, and then or Falling Into You. Um, so there were like five or six uh, records that uh, uh, in, in throughout the course of uh, the record recorded music that have sold that many records, and Bat Out of Hell is one of them, and I'm the bass player on that record, so there you go. To me, it's kind of like when I heard Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas or Bohemian Rhapsody by, by Queen. And I was a Queen album, you know, a Queen fan. I had the first the debut album, Sheer Heart Attack. But by the time, and then I hear that and I'm like turning around uh, and saying, well, what the heck? Um, but to me, Bad Out of Hell was not, I wouldn't have picked, I would have been wrong, but I wouldn't have picked that album as being a hit album. And But it, to me, that was a good example of people at least widening the horizons a little bit and saying there's more to radio than this you know i, I mean they got kicked out jim and meatloaf got kicked out of clive davis's office that uh, clive said you, you guys you you should go find something else to do in life because you are never going to be successful um and that's you know clive davis who uh you know has a, has a a really good ear um uh, you know, to his credit, Todd heard something in that music that no one else or very few people did um, and took it and created something or helped create something. It was really Jim and Todd uh, that, uh, that 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 really envisioned that record the way it was, the way it is. Um, and, uh, you know, and now there's uh, there's uh, you know everybody's uh, uh, is responsible for the success of Bad Out of Hell. You know it's like I uh, there was a when Jim Steinman passed away there was a Facebook post by someone who uh, I know, um, and he was lamenting the fact that Jim had passed and remembered his work on Bad Out of Hell one. The guy was never anywhere near the freaking record. Um, so there, what what is the what's the what's the phrase? Um, uh, 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 success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, everybody's the first one to say, yeah, I did this on that. Right. I did that on that record. I was in the studio when they did this. I was at, no, sorry. Um, there was four of us that recorded the basic tracks for that record from top to bottom. It was myself, Todd, Max Weinberg and Roy Bitten. And uh, and then a lot of people came in and did overdubs and background vocals. Rory Dodd and Ellen Foley on background vocals. Myself, I, I did some background vocals. Todd sang some backgrounds. Meat was uh, was delegated to the corner until it was time for him to sing. And then we said, OK, you can sing now. Um, and uh, and but it was really Jim and uh, and Todd that that put that whole concept, that whole record together and. Um, and it just resonated with with uh, with millions and millions of uh, of disenfranchised people who did not want to uh, or didn't fall into the category of um, well at that time there was no John Bon Jovi but um, you know the 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 idea of what 
uh, the music industry was selling as uh, as a beautiful rock star or a successful rock star it was completely the antithesis of that. Which which brings me to sequencing of an album, and it's a question mm-hmm. I ask an awful lot of people. And I mean, oh, by the way, I'm pleasantly surprised by some of the people I'm interviewing. Um, uh, I just interviewed. You know, I know you play with Blue Oyster Cult, Albert Bouchard, mm-hmm. and I was pleasantly surprised by his new album. I'm going, and I asked him too. Uh, there's some really good music being put out by guys who have a few years on me. And I love yeah. that. I'm going, uh-huh. wow, you know, I just turned 61. Uh-huh. And as you can imagine, you start looking at the clock, you're going, well, you know, it's strange. I've been in radio 38 years. I'm doing the best work I've ever done. Uh-huh. I- I'm not afraid of artists when I talk to artists anymore. I mean, at 61, I know they're, they go to the bathroom too, you know, and, and you get better conversations out of that. You give a little bit, they give a little bit. But I'm sort of understanding from my point of view, the formula that I have to make. But I'm watching the clock. Uh-huh. I'm going 61, you know, anything could happen at any time. Yeah. And and I still, and I go, wow, I'm in this same body that I was. I heard you talking about when you were in your 20s with that long interview uh, a, a little while back where you talk about when, you know, when you joining Utopia, you were young and you know, sometimes you're not comfortable in your body. You're learning all these things of kind of how this body suit works, what I do, what happens if I press this. What is it for you? I mean, this is great work. Were you able to listen to it objectively and say, eh, not bad, you know? Um, that's a good question. I, 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 um, I have a hard time listening to my own music. Uh, especially on record. Uh, and it's not until a few years later that I'll go back and, uh, and, and, and when I do listen to it, I remember where I was when I wrote it or what, what, what the recording was like or, um, or, or how, um, how my voice has changed over the years. Um, my, my, my second solo record, which I did in 2004, um, I, I, you know, I, I think it's a, a really, really good, Good record. It's a really uh, the songs might not be really strong and lyrically it might be kind of sophomoric, but um, but it's got some really really good music music that I like and um, and so listening to this record uh, after uh, after recording uh, 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 producing and mixing and then mastering and then you know making sure that the sequence is correct. Like that makes a difference these days. Um, sometimes really, that I, I don't know anyone that puts a CD on uh, and listens to it from top to bottom. You just, you know, people just skip around and, uh, it, you know, attention spans are just so incredibly short these days. Um, we're, we live in, in the world of TikTok and, you know, and, and just scrolling, 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 swipe, 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 swipe. Um, so... So it's going to be a few years before I go back and and listen to this record and um, and not uh, think that I should have, you know, that guitar part should have been a little louder. That vocal should have been ducked a little bit. Um, I should have resung that that word um, or I wish I had changed that lyric. Um, you know, I, I, I'm on to the next. I'm, I'm yeah. constantly on to the next. Paul McCartney, you've probably heard this where he'd go, oh, you know, they talk about the Beatles and he'd say, oh, yeah, they were good. I, you know, I heard them on the background. They were a good little band. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd be in yeah. a restaurant. And for whatever reason, for that space of time, even though those songs have been played, I mean, I know you're, you're a fan as well. Everyone is. It's a reason why a lot of us do what we do. But, but there is that moment sometimes you're able to have a, a piece where you can listen to it objectively in spite of yourself. You know, mm. that's that thing. You know, I, I, I was doing an, an interview yesterday and, and I, I inevitably get the question asked, uh, what, so what was it that made you decide to become a musician? And, and the answer is inevitably always the same. It's that I was on the couch in my parents' living room uh, watching Ed Sullivan show in February of 1964. And I saw that, I saw the Beatles and I said, that's what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. Um, but come hell or high water by hook or by crook i am going to make a living at being a musician uh and i think that determination at nine years old really kind of solidified my uh, my my path and i, I you know I, i'm a very very lucky person i'm very blessed I, i've had a tremendous career 
Um, do I sell millions of records? No. Um, have I worked with hundreds of artists? Yes. Am I on hundreds and hundreds of records? Yeah. Um, so I, I have no complaints, believe me. Uh, uh, you know, it didn't work out exactly how I planned because I thought for sure that I could be in the Beatles. <laughs> so that didn't really, that didn't pan out. Um, but, uh, but I did wind up working with one of them. So I'm very happy about that. If you want to hear the entire interview via podcast or video, the links are in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.